Today on an all-new Ricky, I didn't meet the right person, and time was running out for me. Co-parenting without a relationship. How did you come to find each other and have this beautiful daughter? The new modern family. Does she understand that you're not a couple? But it's not all happily ever after. This is extremely serious stuff. Mm. What you're trying to do is figure out what's best for your child. You said you hated him so much. Mm -hmm. We were living in a state of paranoia. And that he was going to take the baby from we you. We didn't know what was going to happen. How to find the perfect match to help create your baby. It works a lot like a dating site, except everyone is there, is ready to have a child. On Ricky. Feet. Here is a common scenario. A guy and girl fall in love, marry or not, they decide to have a baby. They're excited about raising that child as part of one big happy family. But today's show features the latest twist. What if mom and dad aren't romantically involved? In fact, what if they purposely choose each other knowing they never would be romantically involved? Does that sound bizarre? <laughs> well, welcome to the new American family. Let's begin with Rachel and Paul and Grace. Here's their interesting story. I'm Rachel Hope. I'm 41 years old. I live in West Los Angeles. I'm a co-parent. This is our daughter, Grace. She is going to be four. It's working out very well, right? Daddy is a, yeah. he's a good daddy. He's 65, so he doesn't want to have more kids. But it's working out because he's so happy with this kid. So many people around me were having some terrible divorces, and the kids were getting so damaged by that. Well, there's this alternative, and it was really wonderful to be able to be parents sharing raising our child without the turbulence of romance. I believe that co-parenting is a social evolution. Amazing. Please welcome Rachel and Paul. Hi, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Great to have you. I mean, we were talking about it in, in my production meeting. It's, it brings up so many questions, and it's just fascinating. I mean, what we're, we're able to do nowadays with technology. And so tell us, how did you come to find each other and have this beautiful daughter? Well, I've known Paul for many years, and when I wanted to have another child, I was looking in the, my friends and family and said, who would make a great dad? Obviously. <laughs> so let's talk about you have your first son, Jesse, yes. with also a friend. Yeah, my best friend, and he's still my best friend. Uh, 23 years ago, uh, we met and we became great friends, and we said, oh, we would make a great family, you know, and, and we weren't romantically inclined, but in some ways we wanted something like that. We wanted our family never to break up. Okay, so yeah, so, so I mean that concept, because you, did you, so, and you are in a relationship with someone now. I don't want to jump ahead, but it's like you, you're in a relationship, but yet you don't want to have necessarily a child with that person, or you don't, you may not want to have a child with that person. I mean, person. it could happen. I mean, it's not mutually exclusive, but at the time, I said, well, this is a person I can really do have a family with, and it doesn't mean that I can't keep looking for a, a mate, but I knew that I could do family with him. Mm -hmm. So how did it work with Jesse? Because I know you were living in Hawaii at the time with yeah. his dad. Yes, and we lived together on the same property. We had houses side by side. Um, everything we did was like, you know, we're totally family bonded. So were you like-minded with the way you wanted to raise your child? Yes, our, we, our core values were identical. I mean, we knew that we could be uh, partners as family partners. So what did you discuss before going into this? Everything, uh, politics, religion, diet, vaccinations, childbirth everything for six months on the phone and everything was sort of done legally on paper well back in you know 23 years ago it wasn't like a any kind of we well, now you can get some legal documentation but then um, the family law that that governs everything you have a mom dad they go on the birth certificate joint custody unless somebody wants something different we were happy with that and, and, and it worked out yeah. so well and your son is well adjusted and happy yeah. and amazing so yeah. you had seen how she was raising Jesse with her best friend so when you stepped in and decided to have a child you thought it would be a healthy situation for you oh yeah it was good for me because um, I have uh, multiple businesses you know and I, I work a lot 
and uh, that I haven't had any children. I'm 65 years old, and, and I thought, well, this is an opportunity to have a child and not be, you know, totally involved. That's what I was thinking, you know. So initially, yeah, that was your thing. He's like, okay, more than a sperm donor, but not like a full-time dad. But it changed. So, wait, so, so what changed? Well, uh, we were uh, traveling back and forth. We were living in two different states, Oregon, California. And so every month, they would come up to Oregon to my home, or I would go down here for seven to ten days a month. And that seemed to work okay for a while until Grace decided daddy is, <laughs> you know. She's a real daddy's girl. Real daddy's girl. And all of a sudden, she didn't like the idea of daddy leaving anymore. So, so I moved down to So LA. you now live, the, and do you all live together? Yes. What a mensch. He pulled up root and he came down there and... It's, it's a relief because she was, you know, crying and, you know, she didn't want to be away from there's her There's a dad. lot to consider. I mean, yeah. there's, there's, you know, you say you're going to be like a part-time dad, but you really, you, when it push comes <laughs> to shove, it's the, it's the little girl that sort of speaks for everything. Yeah. You, oh, yeah. How did you choose Paul? How did you, I mean, and why didn't you choose de Jesse's dad? Well, he was complete. I mean, that was kind of like, a, I want more children. And he said, I'm really happy with one. And I went, oh, my gosh, I got to find someone else. I tried, you know, a conventional way meet a new person probably get married and just didn't meet the right person and the time was running out for me so I started looking at the people I knew that I knew would make an excellent father and I kind of talked him into it <laughs> yeah and how has it been I mean she's gorgeous yeah. I mean has it been just easy going um, I mean, she's a handful and she's very passionate. I mean, she's very, wants both of her parents there all the time. So if one of us is gone, she's, you know, wants us together all the time. So. And does she understand that you're not a couple, that you have a girlfriend? I don't know if she understands that or not. I mean, she knows that uh, she has lots of uncles and aunts, you know, so she has such a big uh, family uh, that... And I wonder if it matters. I, wonder, I don't uh, think we'll she even... She doesn't later. even think about it. I mean, I don't... She's never mentioned it, and, she, and she's a real communicator. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> like Rachel, you know, so... <laughs> but she's never said anything. She just accepts... Because we're really happy. I mean, we're always happy, you know. So there's really, we've had no, almost no conflict mm -mm. at all. Nothing. It's the village. I mean, she yeah, just I mean, it's, people. It's, it's like thinking about this. It's not the conventional way, you know, a, a woman and a man fall in love, they get married, and they have a child. I mean, this is very sort of unconventional. But yet, you think about it, it's so much. It, it seems like the idea it would be better than a single parent having a child oh on gosh, their own. Yes. I mean, you think. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying yeah. that it's just like better <laughs> than, but you think having more, the more the merrier. Well, when we come back, Rachel is on the lookout for her next parenting partner. <laughs> yes, she wants more, and you've scoped out possibly the right father. I uh, maybe. Well, we're going to meet him next. <laughs> Don't go away. <laughs> and Paul who have co-parented their four-year-old daughter Grace without any romantic entanglements that's just like couples that don't you know that aren't in the mood with each other for a while okay well let's talk about Parker because he's someone you're also in a way dating or courting 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 okay you've been courting someone for some time but the three of you have never sat together not yet all right <laughs> let's welcome Parker now Parker come and join us to have you here nice to see the Thank three of you, you together first off you and Rachel kind of look like brother and sister don't they <laughs> a little a little a little bit I'd like those eyelashes yeah <laughs> how did you two meet we met on the website Modamily uh, about six months ago and we chatted for a few months on the site via email and what uh, is that site it's a website specifically for matching people that are trying to do this this co-parenting. Co-parent, not, very not much like a web, like a dating site. You fill out a long questionnaire of all sorts of questions of politics and religion and and values, values and everything. Yeah, and it matches you. Well, it tells you kind of what kind of match they are with you. And so you've been corresponding back and forth for since October. Right, and then we did meet in person in November, I think. But you haven't met Paul. Right. 
Paul Parker Parker <laughs> Paul. <laughs> I've seen him, but we really haven't. We've uh, seen each other. Yeah. yeah. So, so really I mean, do you think uh, that he might be a, a perfect match for you? Do you have similar values? Are you looking for the same things? <laughs> We do have, we're on the same page about a, a lot of things. And, and this is, a, you know, it takes time to reveal everything that is really important to be a partnered parent. Um, it's similar to marriage in a sense, but it's really child-centered. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, how, yeah, how, I mean, how long does this process take? I mean, I guess this is different than the other times for you because they were your friends that you knew for many, many, many years. Right, and I'm not having to talk him into becoming a father. He wants to be a, a father already, so that we have that common ground, that we this long desire to be a parent. So. Parker, what, what has this process been like for you? It's been fascinating for me. I, I've looked at other, through the years, I've looked at other ways to do it, and I really wanted to wait until I felt ready to do it, and I felt like my life was in a great spot to do it, to be able to really contribute what I, what I wanted to. And it's been great. Meeting Rachel's been great. Um, you, you ask, like, um, what, what the process is. When we met in person, immediately we, I felt a connection to her, and that really did help a lot. Um, and it's just been interesting growing this relationship and talking, having conversations about the way we would raise children, all of those kinds of and things. And are you single yourself? Do you I have... Am. I am you, currently. You are? Yeah. So do you feel, I mean, you assume, I assume you want a partner that's right. going to want to have a child as well, right? Right. Absolutely. Okay. But you've been looking for a long time. Uh, for a child or for a partner? <laughs> well, <laughs> or both. Well, well, both, but particularly the child. Yes, I have. I've been thinking about it for a long time and looking at different options for a long time. So, but on this site for uh, for uh, it's the, the site about six months, uh, nine months, I guess, on the site. Six months since I first talked to her. And is she probably your top candidate as far as a mother figure? Yeah, I would say that right now. Absolutely. It's so exciting. <laughs> I want to know what's going to happen and, and and how will it happen. <laughs> You can take this one. Oh, um, well, we continue to get to know each other. We have to really make sure that we're a good match and that um, th also that we're a good match also with Paul and Grace. And um, we're doing really well. I mean, there's no red flag. So far, so good. Yeah, so so far, so good. And at some point, we'll go, okay, I think this is it's, it's going to work. We'll perhaps go to a counselor or a coach and really make sure that they think that we're on the, on the same page. Then we'll do some legal uh, agreements and then we'll get pregnant <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I'll use my imagination as to how that will work <laughs> all right every <laughs> uh, that was a joke when we come back much more with Rachel Paul and Parker plus we'll meet the man who brought Rachel pa and Parker together stay tuned with Paul, Parker, and Rachel, and Rachel and Parker are considering co-parenting, and Paul is just fine with that? Yes, you are just yes. fine with that. All right, I want to go to Dr. Michelle Borba. She is sitting in the front row. She is a parenting expert, and one of my friends, can I call you my friend now? Oh, you can. <laughs> okay, so what do you, what, what's your take on all of this? My take is it's fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> it's I, like I mean, it makes I, Brady Bunch tame. <laughs> but I, the most important thing that I see that's working really well here is an immense conversation and discussion that they're having together because this is extremely serious stuff. This isn't like hooking onto a dating bureau when you're trying to figure out a match for you. Mm -hmm. What you're trying to do is figure out a match for your child, child and what's best in the benefit for your child that's the key and it seems like I mean they've been doing a yeah. beautiful job uh, you know it, from, from what I'm hearing I mean the, you, your son Jesse sounds amazing and your daughter seems to be amazing and you've made these sacrifices for your daughter and your I mean everything yeah. seems that you're saying the child comes first yes it's totally encouraged us to keep going and perhaps add another parent to the to our family, our growing modern family. I want to bring in the creator of modamily.com, Mod Yvonne. Tell us how it works. Hi. Um, Hi. Well, Modamily works a lot like a dating site, except it's a community, a social network where everyone is there, is ready to have a child. And you create a profile um, talking about who you are, where you're at in your life, and what type of arrangement you're looking for. You talk about your education, your career, 
and uh, you answer these compatibility questions we call a parenting and lifestyle quiz, where I ask you questions about your, you know, your religion, your politics, and you find the things that are most important mm -hmm. for you. What is the requirement? We try to match you up with someone that feels the same way. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating. You went on the site and filled out a questionnaire. I did. What was that like? Well, it was interesting because the first thing is, uh, you know, it came out with my hair color, my, you know, my eye color, my weight, which I fudged on. I didn't lie to say I was somebody else, so it, I, the producer is looking really good because it was her site. But the other thing is that it then started to ask me questions, for instance, my communication styles, do I scream, how do I, my discipline in terms of spanking, but there was only 10 questions. Mm. I could have posted a video, which I didn't. I didn't realize that there was an additional 150 questions mm. after the fact, but I, my profile immediately went online. My concern was I didn't get the next steps. My next steps would have been, for instance, how long would you suggest as a site that you really communicate with the person right. to find out that that's a good match? You really need to give people who are on that site some very, very specific information so that you're making a commitment that's very, very solid because right. there's no take backs or rewind buttons mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to parenting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Have you had we, any? We have a we have a best practices section where we kind of make recommendations for if you find someone that you're getting along. Obviously, you have to get to know this person. This is not going to happen overnight. And you haven't had any babies yet. No. I mean, we've been around for a year. Um, I think we found success by by matching up. You know, thousands of people that are are looking. They're kind of dabbling, and mm -hmm. there there's people that are um, getting background checks on other ones, and and are talking to lawyers and talking about co-parenting mm -hmm. agreements. And you so know, you're making connections with people. Making connections and making people. Aware aware of this as a viable option other than uh, you know marrying someone that you're not crazy about or being a single parent which a lot of people don't want to do because mm -hmm. it's a lot of work you mm -hmm. need a partner the, then the big red flag on that one when it comes to questionnaires you can write anything you want on it you only get to know that person on a long-term basis exactly. a face-to-face mm -hmm. watching I mean, them all how they this, interact right, exactly. all of this has to be taken with a oh, grain of salt really yeah. it is a great concept really I mean it is and and the two of you would not have met otherwise we no. wouldn't have, so it's a, it's a great way to yeah. make the introduction, but like you said, you have to do the work. It's custom. You have to get all those questions out. You have to make all that dialogue. I help people now to, to start to negotiate, to ask questions. In fact, I'm on my website, you can go to a free webinar. You can ask your own questions, and I'll try and uh, get that conversation going. Mm -hmm. Because as a community and as you know, leaders of making modern family really an option, a viable option, that's what we're doing. We're leading this, and we have to talk about it. We have to bring all these, every question you have and everybody else's question out. Mm. Well, I wish you all the best. Yeah. Please let me know what happens. Please. We will. <laughs> all right. Or I'll have to check out your website. Thank you Thank so you. much for being here. Up next, a lesbian couple asks a friend to father their child, but he wants to be more than just a sperm donor. A lot more. Their two-year court battle when we come back. question for our panel. I have a question for Rachel. Rachel, now that you d are deciding to have a second child. Third child. Third child, I'm sorry. Will your, will, how will you raise your third child from the beliefs that you already raised your second one with the other two guys? Will it make any difference or you'll raise them on the same beliefs and morals and values? I, well, thank you for asking. I have a pretty strong set of, you know, core values and that I'm, you know, looking for someone that, that really matches. However, it's a custom thing. I mean, we would it, uh, be different parents than, you know, the team is, is, is formed and there's, there's some compromises I'm sure I'm going to have to make. But um, so far, I'm meeting incredible people that we have a lot in common. That child-centered, family-centered person, we match, you know. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I just wanted to know, like, how does it actually affect the children by not seeing their biological parents actually be intimate? Like, for to give a kiss, hey, babe, how's it going, Mwah, or something like that. Like, that is a really, really good question. I, I, can I answer yes. yes. <laughs> that question burns my butt every single time. It's like, people assume because, you know, my daughter's mother and I didn't have her, didn't conceive her the old-fashioned way, doesn't mean she wasn't conceived out of love. I mean, we love each other. We're, we're, we're joking, we're hugging, we're... She's going to see love, baby. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> do you want to add something to that, Michelle? Yeah, I, I will pop 
to that one because the strength of the whole relationship, it's about respect. If the child can see respect in whoever is parenting that couple, that's the basis that's really going to help the mentally health of that child. It's respect between the couple. And affection. It doesn't have to be, you know, it, romantic. Yeah. It could be just caring and, and respect, like yeah. you said. Can I just say, every time that I speak to... Uh, my daughter's father, whether I'm at work and she's nowhere around, we always say I love you when we hang up. If we see each other, it's always a hug and a kiss. My husband and him hug every time they see each other. We are a loving family. She knows she is first, and we all love her. And, and let's just say a lot of divorces, that doesn't, doesn't happen. happen. I'm that a product of two divorces. So it, for me, it's completely different. My parents, I always grew up thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have two weddings because my parents won't be in the same room together. Mm -hmm. And my her dad was invited to my wedding. He missed his plane, so he didn't make it to our wedding, but you know, I have to very say, this, involved. This has been a really fascinating hour. I want to thank all of my guests for being here. Thank you to my, Dr. Michelle Borba and all of our guests. The definition of family is always evolving and changing, but as long as a baby is brought into the world and surrounded by people who love them, he's got a leg up in this world. Thank you for watching. See you next time.